Mr. Sams is not here. We want to do the last podcast um, just by me, Mr. Bergman. So I'm just going to kind of tie this one up here so that we can get it going. We're a little behind schedule here. So I want to talk about the molar mass of gases. All right, so we can use the gas laws to determine the molar mass of a gas. So podcast 7.7, that's what we're going to talk about. All right. So what I want to do, molar mass of gas calculations, you could ignore this piece. Um, first of all, we just need to understand what is the units on molar mass. If you recall, molar mass is the number of grams in one mole. And this varies. We usually look on the periodic table to determine what this value is. But basically, this kind of gives us an equation. If you know the number of grams, some number, and you divide by some number of moles, that will give you the grams in one mole. And so this essentially is the equation. Find the grams. Um, yeah, The grams is something that's easily known. Usually you get this just from the mass data. It's easy to put something on a scale and weigh it, or sometimes weigh a gas. Typically when you weigh a gas, you're weighing the uh, lost mass, because gases usually leave a system. And to find moles, you're going to use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And of course, N stands for moles. All right, mass can be measured on a scale, as I said here, and we can measure moles using the ideal gas law equation. So it's really pretty, pretty easy, okay? Um, really, really easy, okay? So let's do an example. One gram of a gas is collected over water. Now, when we say over water, we've got to play that water vapor pressure game that we talked about earlier, and it produces 250 mils of gas. What is the molar mass of a gas? Well, we're going to use this equation. So many grams divided by so many moles. Well, guess what? We know we have 1.00 grams. Sorry, I got interrupted. OK, so now um, so we know it's 1 gram, and then we just divide by the moles. And we've got some data here, uh, pressure and a volume, go away, and a volume. And yeah, so we're going to use PV equals NRT. So what's our pressure? Our pressure is uh, 572 torr. Now, I have to subtract the water vapor pressure. So we have to go to the water vapor pressure table. So I'm going to pause and go find that. So here's the water vapor pressure table. So at 25 degrees Celsius, the water vapor pressure is 23.7. So we're going to subtract this from the answer, 23.7. So that number was 23.7. But since this is around to the nearest whole number, I'm going to say 24. So if I subtract 572 minus 24, I can just do that in my head. That'll be 550, 48, 48 tor. And I have to convert that to ATMs, remember? So there's 760 tor in one ATM. I'll get my calculator at the end here. And then my volume is 250 milliliters. All right, and I can then, there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. I don't need a calculator for that. That's 0 0.25 liters. So that's my volume. And I think that's all I really need to know if I'm going to find the moles. So let me get my trusty calculator out. So let's find the pressure. So I have 548 divided by 760 gives me 0.721. So this is, hello, this is uh, 0.721 atmospheres. All right, that's my pressure. So P is 0 0.721 times my volume, which was 0.25. I'm not going to put the units because it's easier. N is what I'm trying to find. R is 0 0.0821. I got my temperature, I guess. The temperature was 25 Celsius, but I can quickly add that in my head, or I'll do it over here. 273 plus 25. I knew it in my head, but just in case, it's 298. I'll divide both sides by 0 0.721 and 0 0.25. 0.721 and 0 0.25. These cancel here. And of course, I did that wrong. I'm going to divide dove size by 0.0821 and 298. 0.0821 and 298, because of course the N was on this side of the equation. So I'm going to take 0.721 times 0.25 divided by 0.0821. I could have divided by R, which I saved earlier, divided by 298 gives me 0 0.007. I'm going to move the calculator over here. 
So that equals 0 0.007. Now, that, I, that's not just 7. I want to say 7 uh, probably with three significant digits. Yeah, I'm going to point 7. Three seven moles. Watch that. Remember, these two zeros here are not counted as significant digits because they're leading zeros. That's my moles. So that number is 0 0.00737. So now I'm going to take this, divide by this, and I'm going to have my answer. So I'm going to take 1.00. Technically, it's really just 1, really. Well, but it is a significant digit. Divide by 0 0.00737. And I get the molar mass is, look at my calculator. 130, let's say 6 grams in one mole. So that is the answer to this example. Okay, I think we're going to do one more example here. Let's move that over there.